So, do you know how many things I have to haul today? All of these! And uh, you can see the bottom of it, so... Yeah. Under pressure, pressing down on me, pressing down on you, na 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 na. Under pressure! I, I literally can't sing while walking these from one side to the other. I'm so sorry, they are so heavy. Hello beautiful bookworms, my name is Katerina and welcome to my channel and today I'm sporting my I woke up like this baby Yoda t-shirt that, well shirt, that is already uh, incredibly washed and dead, <laughs> but yeah. Um, today is a good day, uh, it's April. It was my birthday this week and so I have a pile of this size of books to actually share with you guys and I would love for you to see like my face better but apparently it's not the case okay now we're talking about thank you for waiting so as you probably guessed I'm here to do my April book haul and I have some really nice ones. I have books, I have mangas, I have graphic novels. The excitement is really well. So without further ado, the first two things that I have here is Spy Family Volume 6 and Spy Family Volume 9 by Tatsuya Endo. Uh, you guys know, if you don't, uh, hello, I'm Katarina. I am obsessed with Spy Family. Uh, and I want to continue watching the animation and to continue reading the story. So... I got these two. I love the covers. Uh, this one is smaller than this one, or if it's not, it's a little bit more shaky than this one, you see. Um, I'm very excited. I, I want more. Uh, I want more. Uh, the ending of five was a fucking cliffhanger. Who would have known? And now I want more. There's more characters being introduced. There's more panic happening. Um, and it's basically a spy trying to save the world with his telepath daughter and his assassin wife that he doesn't know about. So, perfect. It's, it's just... It's the perfect amount of fun, sadness, nostalgia, and just good plot points. You know, good action. So, we want. Yeah. And we have a new one. We have Call the Name of the Night, Volume 1. This is by Tama Mitsuboshi. And this cover is beautiful. It has this beautiful little girl and these beautiful little lights. And apparently this is a manga about this girl that can uh, say, you know, make the night come to her. Uh, and about this doctor that is adamant in curing her. And I don't know if there's supposed to be a romance here or if it's just like father figure, probably father figure. Um, and apparently they have beautiful days together and one day one of the doctors' previous acquaintances returns. Um, and that's supposed to be bad. The artwork is gorgeous and it has a lot of light play and night things and the characters are beautiful and I'm, I'm always excited about a first volume in a series because it has so much potential. Then we have volume 17 of The Ancient Magus Bride by Kore Yamazaki. Yes, yes, I don't have anything else to say. Whoa, okay, so this cover has a little bit of porn. <laughs> no, I'm kidding, it's not porn. Oh, oh okay. This boats differently. I'm seeing a lot of tears. So there's there's going to be at least one more volume. <laughs> I am trying to see if the second arc is finishing. Doesn't seem like it. So, yeah. I, I enjoy The Ancient Magus Bride. I loved the first arc. I enjoyed the second. Uh, but I think it's getting too big now. Uh, and I would like a third arc or... A final resolution of the second arc uh, but I do love it it's kind of folk tales uh, of magicians and alchemists and all of this you know England kind of uh, fairy inhabitants and stuff it is just so great it has a lot of uh, English folklore and I personally love it and it's basically about this young girl 
uh, that lives with this Magus that is kind of like a monster and how they learn about life and love between each other because he's not human but she's also very naive you know and and it's pretty I, I like it just don't make me feel bad about it then we have volume 5 of Alice in Borderland by Haroasu I love these editions I haven't read a single one of these nor watched Alice in Borderland, the series. So, very excited. Uh, but, yeah, I, I don't know anything about this. <sighs> then we have uh, volume 21 of Children of the Whales by Abiumeda. I don't want to sound wrong here because I don't want to transmit you the wrong idea. I love the art style of Children of the Whales. I love the story. I do believe it's milking the fucking cow. I think it should have finished a while back. Um, and I don't know if it's going to be more, but I think so. Let me check. Oh, wait, it said, wait, it says in the background is the build up to the finale. Holy fuck. Is there going to be just one more, one more? Is there going to be just one more? Yes, my prayers have been answered. Jesus, we are here for 21 volumes. My fucking lord. I, I hope the 22nd is the end of it so that this can still finish with dignity <laughs> and I can still love the series. Then we have The Witch and the Beast, volume 10. And if this is not fucking perfection on a cover, go fuck yourself because it is. This is by Kozuke Satake. I have read the first one only and that alone made me say I want it all. I want it all. The art style of this is one of the most beautiful things that I've ever seen and kind of very realistic at the same time. Um, and I, I just love these two characters and I have a feeling that I'm going to cry a lot about them throughout the volumes. Um, yeah, I love this. Uh, is this going to have more? Witch and the Beast, the Beast Volume 11 coming soon. Okay. Okay, it's going to have more. And I am not sad about it. And another manga. And the fucking happiness of my life. Monster Volume 1. In this beautiful fucking edition by Naoki Urasawa. Fuck yes. I'm finally going to be able to read monster. This is a story about a doctor. Doctor um, works in a hospital. In this hospital, two patients arrive at pretty much the same time, one before the other. Uh, one is a little kid and he's going to die if he's not operated. And another one is like a politician and he's also going to die if he's not operated. And people are like pressuring him to operate the politician. I think it's a politician. Uh... I think it's a politician, I don't know. Um, and he's like, no, fuck you. The child was here first. And I'm going to operate on him because if I don't, he's going to die. Um, so obviously, his professional career is fucking over. Uh, but years later, a string of murders start to happen. And he might be the only fucking person that knows who is behind that. Because it happened... In the hospital as well, apparently. Uh, at the time that, that he did this choice. So yeah, I, I, if I'm going to love this. This has social commentary. This has beautiful art style. One of those, you know, very oldy manga art styles. But ones that I love really so much. It has a lot of detail. Um, and it has a very thrilling, kind of psychological horror, plot pacing shit. And I love it. Now for some comics, uh, graphic novels, I mean. Uh, we have A Fallness in the Walls, and this kind of looks like a, a vinyl for some reason. Uh, it's by Cullen Bunn and Rodrigo Zayas, and it's a one-shot. It's, it's just this volume, which is very short, and it, it's about this dude, from what I gather, that just, he moved houses, and after this tragic loss, he's finally re rebuilding his life, and he lives with this girl, I think, and he's just living his best life. However, the guilt and grief that he has within himself has transported 
has been transported into the house that he now lives in. And so strange shit starts happening and it's kind of a haunted house, but at the same time, not really, because it's kind of about grief and guilt. Uh, and I'm super excited. You know these concepts just make me live, and so I'm I'm super excited to read this. Then I have a folk horror, yes, you heard me, a folk horror um, graphic novel. This is called Double Walker. It was written by Michael W. Conrad and illustrated by Noah Bailey. I don't think I know these people. However, this story appears to be incredible. I don't know if it, it won't have vampires. It says, Cully and Gemma are watching their carefree, childless days come to an end and decide to take one last trip to the magical Scottish islands before the baby arrives. What was meant to be a romantic trip soon spirals into paranoia and violence as a bizarre string of murders follows them on their journey. Conrad has returned to this horror roots while continuing to write the... Oh no, this is about the, the, the author. Um, and it says, like... Uh, they have returned with this bleak and mind-blending tale of neurotic folk horror. And please, God, let it be vampires, because I've seen blood, you know, in, in some of the... But it could it could be other things. I don't know. I'm just so fucking excited for this. Like, Scottish Highlands and folk horror? Yes. Yes. Then... Then I got the third installment to the Price Manor series. I got Price Manor, The House That Remains by Michael R. Goodwin. The excitement. First of all, this is so fucking short. Like, I I, I wanted more, but it's like 130. Oh my god, there's, there's a cover for the next one! Ah! Oh my god, oh my god, it's gorgeous. Oh shit, that's beautiful. I'm sorry. <laughs> I just got sidetracked. It's like 130 pages, but I have read um, a little short story by Michael Goodwin, and holy fuck did I love that. It was folk horror, cultish, awesome. I want to see what he does with the Price Manor series. Price Manor series is about this house, this hunted house uh, that moves in time and space, and every time that people get in, the house kind of has to feed on them to keep on living. Uh, so this is set in a post-apocalyptic, not-so-distant future. Six strangers find refuge from pillaging cannibals in an abandoned house. What they don't realize is that by going inside, they have awakened something far more dangerous than their pursuers. And if there's something more dangerous than uh, pillaging cannibals, <laughs> then yeah, they're in danger. Uh, something that can only return to full strength by spilling the blood of its newfound inhabitants, something that will stop at nothing to survive. And, wow, do I want to read this? Then I have a classic, and I have Dr. Zhivago by Boris Pasternak. I have been meaning to read this forever. Forever. Uh, I, I am so excited. I don't know shit about this. I know it's a Russian classic, uh, and I know it has like a love story in it. Um, this is a Portuguese edition, so I'm not going to read you the back, but from what I see here, it says it's a big epical saga from the wonderful Russia of the first half of 20th century, and it's narrated through the story of life and loves of a poet, philosopher, and a practitioner. Uh, in the turbulent days of revolution. Uh, okay, so he decides to take his family to the hills to find safety, but that is the place of the battle between fronts. But he's also divided between family and his love for this nurse. And it is considered the biggest romance of post-revolutionary Russia, and published original in 1957. And, oh, and this author won the Nobel Prize of Literature. Um, but it was, this book was censored. Wow. I, I just, wow. And this translation is made directly from Russian, which I like. I like when Portuguese translations are made directly from the source. Uh, I think they're better that way. Uh, but yeah, uh, yeah, I'm so excited. Then we have Chain of Gold by Cassandra Clare. This is book one in the last hour series, and I got this edition. Ah! If you can't see, 
Um, there is like this high uh, thingy. It has the drawings and I wanted the drawings in the... Um... Shit, how do I name this part of the book? I forgot. Uh, it has a drawing on the part of the book that you can see when they're in shelves. Jesus, I forgot. Um, on the spine. Jesus, on the spine, yes. And um, because I have the Infernal Devices series with this type of spine, I wanted this type of spine for the last hours, but I was like, there's no way they're going to do it soonish, so I'm not going to do it. But I got it. I got it. Wow. Chain of gold with this beautiful fucking cover. Um, it's so autumn-y, but at the same time, it's such summery vibes. I love it. It's uh, like Shadowhunters in the Edwardian era. I love it. I love it. First book in the Last Hour series. Cannot wait to read it. And then I got The House Across the Lake by Riley Sager, which was published in Portuguese as well. In Portuguese, we only have uh, The Final Girls. Um... Mm -hmm. And another one. Jesus, I'm terrible. Uh, the last time I lied, I think. And now this one. We have skipped like two or three uh, books. I have no fucking idea why. I love Riley Sager. He, he's kind of bingeable. And he's kind of like those bad TV shows that you watch. Um, sometimes his prose is not great. And sometimes, and most of the times, I guess one of the plot points he always he always has two and i guess one every time but the second one is like holy shit bro <laughs> how did i not see that coming and so i want to read the house across the lake it has mixed reviews but excited so another book that i've got is the poppy war by rf kuang i am so very excited this is a special edition it's the portuguese edition and it has stenciled edges I am very, very happy. This edition is really strong. It came with a bookmark and it came with some stickers. And this probably means that the rest of Arif Kwong's series will be translated in Portuguese as well because this publisher hasn't let us down yet in what means the completion of series. And so I cannot wait because I'll finally be able to read the Poppy War series. Very, very happy. I also got the two first issues of DC Ruby crossover. There was a previous one, however, this is now different. Um, and yeah, two volumes, two issues, sorry. Uh, I'm so very excited that the Joker is here. And from what I can gather, the Grimm from Ruby, which are the monsters that they fight, crossed over to Gotham City. And so they get to meet Batman and try to eradicate evil together, which appears to be awesome. So I cannot for the life of me find out where's the first names of the authors, but this is by Bennett, Hetrick and Louise, both of them. Then I have uh, issue five of Batman and the Joker, the Deadly Duo by Mark Silvestri and Arif Brianto. I haven't read it, I know, but it, it kind of looks like everything that I've ever wanted to read ever. And so, I'm extremely excited for this and yeah, I want it, I want it, I really, really want to read it and now I have five issues so I should binge read this, I think. And then I have issue six of The Joker, The Man Who Stopped Laughing by Rosenberg, uh, Di Gian Domenico, Franca Villa and Fajardo Jr. which somebody fucking explained to me why the Joker suddenly got ripped <laughs> because I'm not complaining but honestly, I think it's sending a message that it shouldn't be sending. But we love it. We appreciate it. We want more of it, sadly. We want more of it. And then I have The Shadow's House, Volume 3. Volume 3? Volume 3? <laughs> volume 3 by Samato. I am very intrigued about this. I have read the two first volumes and made a review about them, which... Well, about the first one, I think, which I'm going to leave link up above. Um, I'm intrigued about this one. Uh, I want to know where the story goes because at this moment, I still have no fucking clue what genre this is. And it's a very intriguing and short manga. Uh, and I'm definitely enjoying our characters. Then I have the final volume of this beautiful hardcover edition of Orochi by Kazuo Umez. 
I am in love. Look at this. It's just such a beautiful cover and I loved the first two volumes of Orochi. I think I read them both. Yeah, I think I read them both. But I have still to read the third and obviously this one. But I am so excited. Like, I really want to read it. It's horror and not like other Kazuo Mez series that I read. I am actually very invested in our characters and enjoying this one. So definitely a read for sure and now it's over so i can read it fast and be done with the series then i have magus of the library volume six finally i was waiting for this for such a long time and i am in love this is by mitsu izumi um and supposedly is based on captain of the wind by sophie schwim which is a character that is inserted here it's a story within a story. I love it. This is a story about the love of books and how cultures, people, and worlds can be brought together by the page and by the writing and their love of things and how story is incredibly important. Actual real story and stories for the development of countries, people, cultures. And I am in love with this. Every single volume that I read, I want to cry because it's so pure and so magnificent and so beautiful. So very, very happy to have the pleasure of reading another. Then I also got Wretched by Emily McIntyre. And this was gifted to me by Cloudy from Instagram, which I'm going to leave her link down below. You guys should definitely follow her. She's doing a consultant job for everyone that wants to write crime in their books since she has a degree in criminology. So she has really great packages and really cool discounts. I would appreciate if you go and follow her and see what she has to offer, especially if you want to write about criminology or crimes or something in those veins. But Wretched is actually a Never After novel. I really wanted to read the Never After series by Emily McIntyre. I have been following her on Instagram. I will also leave it linked down below. And she is a fighter. She has cancer. She's an amazing person. She's an amazing author. And I just, I've been following her and really wanted to read her books because I just love her personality. And apparently, the Never After series is dark romance with Disney or Disney-like characters but in the real world and having romances and the main focus of the Never After series is the villains having their happy ending uh, with their characters. So there's a lot of books in the Never After series, I do believe that I can read them without an order. Wretched is the third that came out, I don't own any other, but the cover of this is beautiful, it's green and it's purple and we, we had a conversation about this and this is why she gifted it to me, which is so cute because she remembered it and this is basically a retelling of The Wizard of Oz, but focusing, well not a retelling, it's inspired by The Wizard of Oz, especially by um, The Wicked Witch of the West and She's our main character, her name in here is Evelina Westerly and she kind of works for her dad in this like drug trade commercial thing and she has a one night stand with this dude uh, and one day that dude appears in her dad's work and he has a different name and he is actually a, an undercover DEA agent and he wants to destroy her family because they took something from him with their drug trade. Um, so it's kind of like their romance. She's supposed to be wicked, I mean, uh, in this case, wretched, you know, and he's supposed to be like the, the goody two shoes, but I have a feeling that that's not, not going to be all of it anymore. Uh, but yeah, I'm so very excited to read this. If you know anything about me, you know I love The Wizard of Oz and I love particularly the Wicked Witch of the West since I've read Wicked by Gregory Maguire. I really want to see the musical. I know all of the songs by heart and I just, I don't know, I feel and empathize a lot with Elphaba, which is the name that Gregory Maguire gave the Wicked Witch of the West since she has no name apart from Wicked Witch of the West. Um, and I, so I'm very, very happy to see something reflecting her in a way and it's all green so it matches my eyes and it's all purple which is my favorite color and I'm so happy that I got gifted this. And then another gift that I received was God Killer by Hannah Kanner. Um, this I received by my friend Maria Joan which I'm going to leave link her Instagram down below. I do think that she has it on private but I mean 
we shall see if she does. Um, and this is the start of a new fantasy series, but it's incredibly short, and apparently every single person that read this has no bad thing to say about it, which I am amazed. It's kind of like a, a first book, and it's already that good, and it's short, and it's a fantasy, and the end papers of this are fucking extraordinary. I have her little note here. Look at that. Look at that. And this is hardcover edition because she knows how much I love hardcovers. I don't believe that the paperback is available also, but I, I hardcovers are like my favorite thing. And I don't want to know a lot about this, but I do know that it has to do with this person that specializes in killing gods, but there's one god that she can't kill, I think. Um, so gods and stuff and murder and, you know, fantasy. We love it. I love the cover. I, I love everything about it and I really want to read it. So I'm very happy that I have it. So that's going to be all for my book haul for the month of April. And I hope that you guys enjoy this book and uh, this book, this book haul. If you like, leave a like or subscribe and tell me down below if you have any of these books or want any of these books. And if you've read them or not, please no spoilers. That's all for today. Happy readings to you all. Bye.